Hello everybody. I just want to share my experience with um, overunity.com. Uh, I've been over there for just over two years now. Uh, January 16, 2015 is when I started the thread you can see here. Um, I am now moderated. I've been moderated out on all accounts. Uh, I've been accused of lying, which I have not lied at all. Uh, everything I've shared, everything I've said, I've backed up with evidence uh, to prove that I have not lied. Um, yet they've moderated me out. I, I can no longer post, um, so that's why I'm not over there anymore. There's a small group of people there that are just completely difficult. Um, the, uh, the intentions behind what's going on, uh, I can only guess at, but um, the intentions don't appear to be very good. Stephen Hartman uh, is a funny man. He has moderated me through the word of one one person uh, on all my accounts um, and he's been told that I've lied and I've proved to him that I've not lied but yet I'm still moderated. Uh, I've been accused of hacking the forum. I have not hacked the forum. Um, Stefan Hartman seems to be in contact with all the top energy bosses which I find disturbing um, and untrustworthy. On many occasions he has um, shown affiliations with different energy bosses, uh, one being a cooler's um, partner if you like, Arthur Thacknell, which is uh, Steho Energy. Um, Stefan has all the videos on his YouTube channel, the whole lot. Um, again, I find this uh, rather disturbing. It seems to me that there's something going on in the background. Anyway, I'm moderated out. I can no longer post. This is my other username here, HYIQ, obviously following my website. Um, my posts are no longer being um, allowed to go through. Some have been sitting there for just over a week now. Uh, nothing's been done. Um, so it's it's a bit disturbing. It's a bit disheartening. I've spent a lot of time over there trying to share what I, what I know, what I've found through my experiments and everything. Um, which is a bit sad. But anyway, what I want to go through is not just that. I want to go through and share um, a little bit more on, on the COIL idea that um, I've been trying to present to people for so long. Partnered output COILs. Uh, basically what, what's going on here is the electrical generator when it generates electricity, um, the fields oppose for part of the cycle. Uh, so as the rotor moves in, um, the rotor will be opposed by um, the uh, generating coil. Um, and I've made various videos on how electromagnetic induction and what in induction works. Um, please go and visit, visit those videos. I've spent hours and hours and hours doing them. Um, there's a lot to learn. If you want to learn this stuff, you really need to grasp these these basic concepts. These basic concepts are the start. Um, and, and the most important thing, <clears throat> excuse me, to be able to understand or, and head in the right direction on some of this technology. Some of this technology is so simple um, once you understand it, but it's so hard and it's complete guesswork unless you've sort of started in the right place. Electromagnetic induction, as we know it, is uh, well understood. We, we have understood it for some 187 odd years. Uh, since Faraday's discoveries. Um, now my uh, my claim is that it's not completely understood. We still have more to learn about something that is very, very old. Um, science should never um, be content with knowing everything or knowing all there is to know about something that uh, is so complex, is, is so... Um, uh, Hidden in mystery, if you like. Um, Clementine Figuera, I think, I think is how you say his name, uh, said study the dynamo, and that's how he uh, got to um, build his devices. Um, it's actually in a couple of his papers. Uh, Akula said the same thing. Um, you'll see here in just a second that um, he has studied the alternator, the, the electric alternator for a car. Um, and through various different means he has, he has learned that the time rate of change of the magnetic field in proximity of a conductor um, generates electrical energy.
you know, there's various different uh, means to to do it, um, and you'll see just on the left there uh, is the schematic for the car alternator. Um, Floyd Sweet said the same thing. Uh, he knew electromagnetic induction, um, backways, sideways, all sorts of ways that you could possibly know. Um, it's very important. Electromagnetic induction is not properly understood. We don't properly understand it. Um, every time we think of a magnetic field changing in time, we should think of an um, electromagnetic wave. Um, and various different electromagnetic waves can interfere. Um, something that we've done uh, recently, a couple of guys in the forum have done some really good work, is um, what we call the Mr. Prever experiment. Now this experiment is um, is fantastic. It's the most simple, uh, small, cheap experiment that you could possibly do and learn so much from. Now it's very, very easy to pass everything over. It's very easy to overlook some of the most important, important things in here. Uh, but things like, you'll see once you actually do the experiment, you'll see that there's a standing wave in there. You'll see that there's um, that there's a negative power factor on one of the coils, which basically means when there's current going in one direction but voltage um, polarity in the other. Um, and as it stands, this experiment is not over unity, um, but it's not hard to, to get it to over unity. This is about the most simplest form um, that I've seen at least of, of the step in the right direction. Um, and once you realize this, once you've done the experiments, once you see what's going on here and understand it, then everything else makes so much more sense. Okay, I just want to thank, uh, send thanks out to John K1 for the translations in behind this video. Uh, this video is um, has been translated by him, um, but the YouTube user, Mr. Priva, that's uh, M-R-P-R-E-B-A uh, is the, the person behind this. Fantastic experiment, so thanks to him as well. Okay, now you can see here, just pause it for a second, you can see here that one of the currents in one of the coils is very much higher than what the other current in the other coil is. Uh, now this is a set of capacitors over here, so the circuit is actually in resonance. Um, something I should explain and something you need to look for when you do the experiment is when it is in resonance, when you have resonance, um, the currents are 180 degrees out of phase. If you, if you don't have resonance, the currents will be uh, a different angle out of phase. It might be 150 or 140 or something like that. Uh, but uh, resonance is very important in these experiments. Uh, something else that, um, that is, is very important to pick up on, uh, we've been told this before by Tom Bearden. Uh, Tom Bearden in his radionics at a distance video also says the same thing, um, that under the resonance, resonance condition, some of these devices under certain configurations can go over unity. I want to call your attention to the fact that stress is opposed vector forces, summation of a whole bunch of opposed vector forces, either two or more. That's what stress is. I want to call your attention to those pose forces or pump forces. Stress is a pumper. Anything that's stressed, you can tap energy out from God Almighty forever. If you can get it to do this process and get over gain one, which you can do under the oscillation condition. Um, which we know this to be true for sure. So I'll carry on with the video. Okay, so here you can see we, we have an input current 2.8 amps. Um, this coil here has a reverse current of 2.3 amps and the current through this coil uh, is 5.1. So if we were to add 2.8 plus 2.3, we would get approximately 5.1. Uh, it's a pretty interesting experiment because Normally what we'd expect to see is we'd expect uh, for Kirch Kirchhoff's current law would, would see currents in the same direction and we're not seeing that. The reason we're not seeing that is because this coil here is become has become an active element 
which is the only exception uh, for Kirchhoff's current law. An active element basically means it's a battery or a generator, uh, and that's exactly what this is. So what's going on here is the current, the change in current in this coil, which causes a magnetic field, induces by electromagnetic induction a current in this coil. Now, it would normally be equal and opposite. So we see the opposite, but we don't see equal. What we see here is we see that it adds. Uh, and, and that's what I've been talking about for so long. Floyd Sweet said exactly the same thing. The, the current will add um, under the right circumstances. Um, now, as I say, this, this is not over unity as it stands. Um, it's not hard to make this over unity, though. This, this device is the start. Okay, and just a credit. Fantastic. All right, so to get to the next step, um, I want to show a very simple circuit, again by a cooler. Uh, now, just about everybody should be familiar with this. This is um, a cooler's 30 watt lantern. Um, there's been a lot of spec speculation, a lot of replication, very high tech replication too by a lot of people. Um, but again, the reason that people can't replicate this is simply because they don't understand it. They don't know where to look. They don't know what the what the coils are supposed to do. Um, to simplify this to the to the best simplification of the Mr. Prever experiment, if we take this capacitor here, C11, it's a 2,200 UF electrolytic, and it's a it's a DC capacitor. Um, so this one here is the same. Um, C3, so 2,200 UF, uh, 2,200 UF, and you'll notice that each of the bottom of the capacitors, the negative side, both of them are connected together via ground. If you connect any DC capacitors uh, back to back um, with opposing polarities, uh, negative to negative or positive to positive, you can actually induce um, an, an AC waveform via these two capacitors, and they're both connected by diodes and via the MOSFET here uh, to this coil. So this coil essentially forms forms a loop. Now the diode here does create um, uni a unidirectional current, um, so obviously it, it, it comes back up here. So th this is actually a loop. Um, now you'll see something that I've been pointing out for a long, 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 long time. Uh, this is 15 turns, this one's 45 turns. So there's three times the turns on this coil than what there is on this coil. And if we go back to the Mr. Prever experiment, you'll see that the current through this coil and the current through that coil will oppose, which generates electrical energy. Um, and because they're connected together, it's a feedback loop, which is what Floyd Sweet's been telling us for some 25 plus years. Um, the feedback loop essentially means that as energy is generated in this coil, uh, we'll fill the capacitor up on this side, come back through this coil, fill the capacitor up through this side, and it, it basically just keeps feeding back on itself. Um, and various different documents that Floyd Sweet has written um, it goes through to explain that it increases the velocity of the electrons in the wire. Um, it was at 6.24 to the 18th electrons <clears throat> uh, per second is one amp. Um, and Floyd Sweet talks about increasing that beyond um, the known uh, rate of electrons to actually speed up the um, the rate of electrons in the in the coils and increase the current. Uh, makes perfect sense if you think about it log logically. Um, essentially, if you if you had a water tank, for example, a big long uh, pipe, uh, you put the water tank only one meter off the ground, you're going to have a flow of water of X. If you put it 10 meters off the ground, you're going to have 10 times the flow of water. Uh, so it all all makes sense. Now this um, simplification, you'll see here that this is basically a very simple simplification of the coils. 
So uh, these figures are just random figures. They're not not real, not true. It's just a random uh, random guess. Uh, so these two coils here are the coils that we saw. The two diodes, the two capacitors, and this is the the switch. Now every time you see a switch in a circuit like this, it indicates the time rate of change, um, which in this case would be an oscillation between the two capacitors, remembering that back-to-back -back DC capacitors can be used as an as an AC, as bipolar uh, capacitors. And if we were to look at this um, with no tuning, you'll see that there is, if you look at that carefully, you'll see that there is an, an, oscill an oscillation of types. It's, it's not tuned, it's not um, it's not set to any specific figures, but these two coils with these two capacitors and set with these two diodes uh, will oscillate at a desired frequency or at a specific frequency set by um, PT, which is the pulse train to the MOSFET. So I hope this helps people. Um, we have had a rocky ride. Um, it seems to me that there's a lot of people out there that don't want this information to come out. As soon as people get close, they get shut down, uh, which is very sad. Um, and we're, we're just overall, as a whole, we're just not getting anywhere. Um, these coils do work. The reason I haven't showed my work is I don't want to become another a cooler. Um, I've shared plenty of work over the years showing various different effects, which a lot of people just explain away as all sorts of random carry-on. Uh, but I just want people to know that this does work. Uh, you'll find it everywhere, everywhere that you look. Um, there's Graham Gunderson, there's um, Floyd Sweet. A businessman with half a brain is not going to fund anyone, is not going to invest time and money if a device doesn't work. And we know from Stefan's words that Arthur Thacknell from Steho Energy has invested his money, his time, his effort into a cooler's work which obviously means it works. I mean, clearly there's enough proof out there. There's hundreds of videos showing devices running themselves. Some people can claim that they all run from radio stations or whatever. I know for sure they don't. These devices work. They work on the principles that I'm trying to share. Um, Lester Handershot, there's 101 different names out there. Many, 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 many names. Um, uh, and for some people it's very easy to explain it away um, because they can't replicate it, because they can't understand it, they don't want to understand it, they don't want it out. Uh, whether they're being paid to keep it under wraps or what, I don't know. But anyway, this does work. Um, if you take small steps, learn the Mr. Prever experiment. Um, maybe not post your postings at overunity.com. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I just want to let people know that's why I'm not there anymore. They have shut me down. They've shut me out. They've accused me of lying. They've accused me of hacking. None of which is true. Um, so beware. Um, the Mr. Prever experiment will prove very valuable if you study it for long enough. Um, and it will make sense as time goes on. It's the most simplest thing in the world, but it's very complex in the way that it works underneath. I mean, the whole device you could make work for less than $20 and, and an hour's work, but you need to know how it works. You need to know how the coils are posed, and you need to know that, um, uh, that, that there is a resonance condition where the currents are 180 degree, 80 degrees out of phase. Good luck, everybody. I hope it all works for you.